All right, so you guys have been watching me machine this T-nut here for this compound. This is off of a Precision Matthews lathe, and they are wanting to 
bolt this uh, Peely Tools multi-fix tool post up there to it. And the way that I have uh, shown this before, like I did on the American Pacemaker, is the way that they recommend that these tool posts be mounted is that you have a solid surface on there. You don't have a gap there like you traditionally see with a uh, wedge style, quick change tool post, American style. They like to have full contact on this right here. So an easy way to do that is just to make a solid T-nut and then you can either bolt it down using bolts, uh, so socket head bolts to bolt it down or you can use set screws there to push it up against the T-slot. And that's, that's the way I've done mine and it works just as well. So all you'll have to do is just install the T-nut there. And once this is installed, it's pretty much there. Doubt it'll ever have to come out. So we'll get it, you just get it centered up. I've got it milled to the same width as the compound slide there. And then we still need to set this up. We'll set this entire compound slide in the vise on some parallels. And then we're gonna run a face mill across this right here to cut the top of the T-nut even with the top of the, uh, the compound slide there. So you'll take your, take your Allen wrenches and just tighten the set screw, torque it down, torque it down nice and tight. <clears throat> and then we'll set that up and just make one cut across it to uh, clean that up. And then you will have pretty much a solid surface there for the tool post to bolt down to. So, Next step is we'll get this milled and then that'll be ready. This was a three quarter 16 threaded hole that we machined in there. And so what we're gonna do is machine a post, a stud, if you will, that will screw down into the T-nut that this will sit down on. And then we'll probably have some half inch threads on the top and use a half inch flange nut to uh, hold the top of the, the tool post there. And then we'll also have to take this guy here. They purposely leave these holes small so that the end user can drill or bore these to whatever size they want for whatever size stud that they're gonna use. In our case, we'll drill this and bore it to half inch and then we'll have a half 13 thread sticking up out here for it to uh, pull down with. I've been getting my setup ready here on the mill so that we can mill the top of this compound slide. <clears throat> I just wanted to point out what we're gonna be doing is setting it on the base here all right, there was, a, there was a ding in this thing right there. That's how it showed up. So I filed that and I hit that with my precision, precision flat stone so that we should have a good flat surface there with no more dents or dings in the bottom of that. And then so I've also got some of my fireball tool magnetic blocks stuck to the side of this because our jaws that we're gonna be using to hold this can't come all the way in here to this area because of the base. You know, got this radius machine in there. So we're just using those magnetic blocks as spacers so that whenever we clamp it in there like that, we're clamping on this part and not this right here. And now I've got it, I've got it figured out and that's gonna work out pretty good just like it is. And then I also have a couple of parallels in the bed of the vise here. I've already mic'd those, so those are within you know, a couple of tenths of being the same size on, uh, on height there. So those should work pretty good. And we'll be able to set that down in there. It's gonna clear this center post here and set down on this machine surface. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. See if we can sit in there without losing our uh, blocks. Just kind of get it. I've got everything where it's just kind of centered in the vise there. And we're sitting on our uh, parallel there and we're on our parallel on that side as well, okay? So just like that, that should hold it pretty good. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use our uh, stair at 196 and just do some sweeping on here and uh, just see how flat or parallel it is with the machine table.
right, that's pretty tight on that one right there. It's taking some resistance to get it to move. And I'm gonna check this side as well. Same as that one, it's got some resistance, but make sure I can get it all the way down. Now it's, it's a lot tighter there. Did we move this side? It's got resistance against it, so it looks like it's gonna be about as flat as we can get it there on the parallel. That side's tight. We'll go ahead and run it down here to a, uh, a zero. And we're gonna sweep it this way and we'll go across that way as well. See if you guys can get that zero a little, a little bit easier to read for the camera. That's where it's come up on the block there where we mill it down. So we got that 20 thousandths tall. All right, drops off there to zero. Looks pretty flat right there. We got maybe a few tenths uh, difference on that. But like I said, we're bumped down as flat as we can get it. So we're relying on the machine work of this block right here. All right, so I'm gonna bring it across in the Y axis over here to this side. Now I can see it moving, so we're not parallel. So it dropped three thousandths. Let's see if we're flat that way. So this direction, we're, we're low on this side, three thousandths, or this side's three thousandths higher. Now, why that's not square and parallel, I don't know, but that's, that's the machining of the compound right there. And we've got it bumped down against our parallels there. They are snug on there. So without doing some, you might be able to do some shimming on that to, uh, to get it flat, but three thousandths across there, I think all we're gonna be doing is just cleaning this up. So I'm gonna use a three inch face mill and we don't even need that much. We only need a little bit over two, two and a half inches, I think it was. So we'll use a three inch face mill and just line the edge up here and just come all the way across here like this. So it'll be about even with those marks there. And we'll have a three inch wide uh, mill cut where we just touch the surface right there. So I got to thinking, I'm showing you guys this. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and try to make it as best we can. I feel like the top of this really should be machined parallel to the base there, because that's where it's pulled down to. But the fact that we're 3 thousandths off on that angled it's kind of bothering me a little bit, and I would like our cut to be even with the top of that. So we're going to try some shims on it. This is some 3,000 shim stock here that I've cut, and we'll put it under this side, clamp it down again, bump it down, and I'll indicate it and see if we can get this picked up on that side there, 3 thousandths. I think the easiest way to maybe do that is to just put our shims right here. That's good. Let's try it again. All right, so, so it seems the same in the x-axis of what we had. Now let's try it this way. And I have not, I improved it some, but it's still a little bit in there. That's one and a half. Yeah, so about one and a half, one and a half thousand. So I'll cut a couple of more. I'll, I'll take those and cut them in half and stack them 
and see if we can uh, get that, that last one and a half thou out of there. Much better. So maybe a half a thou, maybe not even that much, but got a slight amount of movement in there. All right, I feel much better about that, even though still not technically parallel to the base, but at least we're gonna be matched up to the surface. It's already been machined. Yeah, I think we're good to go there. Our KBC mill is working great for this job right here. We just finished our cut. So after you saw me touch off with the paper there, I knew that was gonna be within a couple thousandths. I went ahead and brought it up ever, ever so slightly until we were just starting to touch the corner of this cast iron. And what I did was I set our zero to that point right there and backed it off uh, 10 thousandths, made a cut, and then brought it back down to our zero and you can see we still got our zero there and I went just past the zero. I didn't even go a half a thousand, but just past it. And so our touch off plus that little past zero is where we're getting into our uh, cast here, the cast iron material. And you can feel that little, you can feel a step there, but it's so minute that it's, it's not a big deal. But I wanted to make sure that that was completely cleaned up all the way across there. There wasn't um, any variation in it. So it worked out really well. The, uh, the Walter face mill did a good job milling that. We've got a nice, uh, pretty surface on there. And then that is gonna give us our solid uh, surface there for our, the base of our tool post to pull down onto. 
So this part of the job is done. Uh, next phase is we need to machine the stud that's going to screw into this that will uh, hold the tool post down to the compound there. All right, while we're on the lathe, I want to uh, show you, I just got this back from uh, Written Industries. And what I had done is I sent them one of my old life centers that I had actually bought at an auction that was messed up. Now, this uh, live center was not built by Written. It was, a, it was another manufacturer and they had actually already repaired it once in the past. I didn't realize that until I sent them some pictures of the repair order. And um, they actually put their repair orders on the live centers that they repair and, uh, and send them back. That way you can reference it. So uh, Written Industries makes really high quality live centers for uh, you know, lathe use. And uh, they, they also have a wide range of um, face, plate, face drivers for uh, turning between centers. And that's something that we're going to be getting into uh, pretty soon with our CNC lathe there as well. But I wanted to go ahead and take this thing out and put it to work. But I wanted to show you before we, um, before we actually start using it so we can see what it looks like. This is the first time I'm seeing it after the, the repair here. Yeah, so they got the... Uh, they went ahead and laser etched in there the repair order number. That's pretty cool. So this guy right here, it had a burned up center on the end of it. The, uh, this, this point right here was completely burned up and rolled over. And I wanted to see about having it repaired because it's, uh, it's actually much cheaper to have one repaired than it is to buy a brand new one. And so that's the, one of the services that they provide. You can send these guys in, uh, even if it's not made by Written Industries. So if you, may, if you have one, say like a Royal, uh, Royal Products, they make live centers and the bearings are bad or the center's messed up, uh, it needs a new spindle in there, you can send them back to them. And what they will do is that they will quote you uh, before doing any repair. So they sent me a quote on this to have it repaired. I thought it was good, so I went ahead and had them go ahead with it. And um, and so what they have done is, I can tell this is brand new. This uh, spindle here, the center, is new. And I'm sure it's probably new bearings in there as well. And then they've just cleaned it up some uh, also. So this is, I love these kind of centers because you have this extra length here that protrudes out from the center itself so that it allow you to come in here with your turning tools and get closer to the center for those smaller diameters when you turn on the end of the shaft there. So feels just like it's supposed to. So now we can put this guy to work on our lathe. Uh, we got our rebuilt Written Industries live center in there. See how it's gonna do. I can already tell that it's much smoother than that other one I was using. All right, so no uh, complicated stuff here. We're turning this down to half inch, and then we'll have an undercut in there, and then this will be threaded for half 13. This is already turned to 20 millimeter, I believe, 0.785. And then uh, once we get this threaded, and all this chamfered and everything like it should be, we'll take it out, bandsaw it, and then we're gonna thread this other side to uh, screw into the, uh, the new T-nut on the compound slide.
So I'm shooting for 0.784 on the micrometer. That should be, that should put me in the range of where I need to be for a good fit. Looks like we nailed it right about where we want it there. And to make a couple of uh, very light spring passes. And then we have just a standard um, flange nut. And this is a Tico flange nut. What I would recommend to be used on there. Got a nice fit on there. I just need to file the top there, polish it up, and then this part's done. Right, so we're machining our three quarter 16 thread there. Let's go ahead. I should be about where I need to be. This is always trickier being right up against the chuck like this, not having room for my hand to get in there. You just have to kind of manipulate it. Try to hook the, the triangles. So I'm shooting for a 1.055 on the mic, measuring over the triangles there. All right, so let's see if you can focus in on that. So one inch, 55 and what, six tenths. So I'm gonna call that good enough right there. That should, that should fit right where it's at. There's our machine stud, three quarter 16. Let's see how it fits. Very close fit. That would be a machinist fit right there. I'm having to grab onto it to twist it in there. So it, it could have, we could have used another half dial or even a thousandths off that thread, but that's good. You see it's all the way in there. That's it. So that'll run like that once it's installed, it's there. What I'll do is I'll mill a couple of flats on here also so that you can use a wrench to tighten this up and it's, and it's tightened up in there. So that's good. All right, that part of it's done. So on our post, I machined this, so it'd be a slit fit inside this bore here. This is gonna slide down on that, so that's the next thing we need to just take. I'm gonna put this in the three jaw and just drill and bore that um, half inch so that it'll slide over this stud right there. All right, there's our spacer. Drilled it and bored it, chamfered it, and made it look nice. So let's go ahead and see if everything fits. We'll go ahead and start with our, with our post to body there. And then we'll go ahead and take our spacer drop that on there all right here's our clamshells we'll go ahead and 
stick them on there, make everything look right. It looks like I got my thread linked correct. This piece goes on top of there. You also have a pointer that slides on there like that. You get this position so that you have, a, that's, your, that's your 40 positions that you can rotate this thing around to, okay? There's also a spring right here. That spring goes down into that groove and that holds what holds that pointer in place. All right, then we can put our flange nut on there. And bam, looks like it's gonna work out just fine. So I've got a little bit of extra thread there on the top, just in case. Maybe he wants to put a washer on there. I don't know, but I made it so that you can put a washer on there and it kind of makes it flush with the top of the, uh, the nut there as well. All right, so all of it fits. It's looking pretty good. Last thing I need to do though is um, I need to mill a couple flats in the stud so that it can be properly uh, tightened down into that threaded hole there. Okay, we finished our last operation that we needed. Got our two flats milled on there. So I started with three quarter. I was gonna see if the three quarter, but I just I just didn't feel like there was enough hold there on the wrench uh, to tighten that up without trying to round it off. So went down to the next standard size, which is 11 sixteenths, and we've got it milled so that 11 sixteenths wrench will fit on there nicely. So this guy should be finished up. We'll just put it together one more time just to kind of uh, look at it again and you can see how this is gonna work right here. You go to install it, you can tighten it up with the wrench just like that and mount your tool post and bolt it down with the flange nut just like that. So there is one more thing that you do with these guys. Now this is something that the end user can do if they choose to, but the way the multi-fix is designed, take this, uh, we'll take these guys off so you can see. All right, in the body of the tool post here, you see you got your three holes. So what you do is you transfer a punch and drill and pin it. You just put like a little dowel pin in there to line up with one of those holes. And there's a couple reasons for that. One, it provides an anti-rotation uh, fixed pin in there so that if you're, let's just say you're turning under a heavy load, um, the tool post isn't gonna try to push off of the tool pressure and twist around. The other reason for that hole there is that it actually gives it, so this is a 40 position tool post. And if you're, just say that the hole right there is where it's lined up to where it's gonna live at. Well, if, if you want another 80 positions, you take that, you take this loose and you spin it around, you drop it in the other hole. There's another 40 positions right there. 
Well, there's another hole right here that you can drop that in. It's gonna give you another 80 positions. I personally have never had a need for that kind of uh, positioning for these tool posts, but it is an interesting feature. So you know, you get a, you're getting a total of 120 possible positions that you can drop this in at if you want to. Uh, for me, I think the most useful thing would be just to pin it so that it keeps it fixed from trying to spin under any kind of uh, heavy pressure there. So just a little uh, info on the, on the multi-fix style. And uh, this one uh, made by Pee Wee Tools, and that's who I use, you know, for the, the one on the American Pacemaker, uh, Peter. Uh, nice guy to deal with, and they supply all of the parts for these guys if you need if you need a wrench for this, if you need the tool holders themselves or whatever, uh, Pee Wee Tools can supply this stuff for you uh, for, your, for your needs. So there we go. This little project is finished up. We're gonna get it wrapped up nice and tight and uh, put it in a box and get it shipped on back to the, uh, the owner of this. And they can, this is a brand new Precision Matthews lathe that they just purchased and wanted to mount the new Pee Wee Tools uh, tool post on there and ask for my help in assisting for this. So they're excited to get this lathe in operation. So I'm gonna get it back to them right away. Hope you guys enjoyed this little project and we'll see you again very soon.